Kia ora koutou, uh, Nisan Bolivinaka, and welcome to our Digital Pacific Live session for Thursday, the 2nd of December. I uh, hope you are all keeping well wherever you are. Thank you for joining us in, in Zoom and also out on there on Facebook Live. Um, uh, my name is Tim Kong. I am uh, from, uh, my father is from the island of Kandavu. This is my village behind me there uh, of uh, Nalotu in the province of Yahweh. Uh, my mother is from uh, South Canterbury. Uh, and I am the program manager of uh, the Pacific Virtual Museum Pilot Project. Um, and it is my pleasure today to host uh, two wonderful guests. Uh, we have Alapati and Darren who are joining us today. And our focus is on um, the title of the, the thing is uh, Pacific Poetry. Uh, but mostly we're looking forward to a Talanoa and a, a wide ranging conversation uh, from these two or oh, now it's one, uh, two gentlemen, <laughs> uh, Darren hopefully will join us in a second, rejoin us, um, on uh, Pacific poetry, Pacific performance, uh, and um, supporting culture and heritage uh, in oral and uh, performing traditions. So um, yeah, I will throw to Alapati to introduce himself. Uh, mm -hmm. And hopefully, Alapati, you and me might just have to pad it out until Jaren, sure. Darren rejoins us. <laughs> but um, I will, yeah, if you could just introduce yourself, Alapati, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, Vinaka, Tim, and uh, yeah, no worries. We'll uh, just play as we go because I know technology always uh, plays up like this. But Io, Nisambulu Vinaka, na Turanga, Kena Marama, Manavi, Indalaniavu, Navi Saiviti, Kenu Silandi, Navi Saiburubura. Uh, Alipate Trail, also Albert Trail uh, of uh, Levuka of Alau, uh, province of Lomaiviti. Uh, born and raised originally in uh, Suva, Fiji. Um, left Fiji as a young boy um, after the first school, uh, but um, always went back and forth uh, with school. Uh, up and down to Fiji and New Zealand, eventually ended up in Hawaii on a scholarship to study politics and uh, Pacific Island studies, um, and then returned to New Zealand, uh, married uh, to my Cook Islands uh, wife, where we also met at university. And uh, here we are again uh, in New Zealand. I believe now I have spent uh, an equal amount or probably more time outside of Fiji than growing up in Fiji uh, now, as far as I can see. Uh, the longest time I've ever settled in one place. Uh, so here in Auckland, based in uh, West Auckland, and uh, where I also run uh, a, an academy for teaching Vosavagaviti and uh, Meke to help ensure um, the passing on of uh, identity and knowledge to our young New Zealand-born Kaiviti uh, based here in Auckland. So Vinagva uh, Tim and uh, Darren for the invitation to come on today, Vinaka. Yovinaka, uh, thank you, Alapati. And um, can I ask, where, where is this location in your background? Uh, this is, uh, as uh, you know, many, many people say the old capital, but I like to say the first capital of Fiji. So this, of course, is a shot from the opposite end of uh, Levuka town, looking down on uh, Morris Estrum, going towards uh, the church on Beach Street, yeah, looking towards the corner there. And Levuka Vakaviti is where my village is from. You can see gun rock there on the tip of the peninsula there. Uh, that's the rock right next to dad's home village, Levu oh, interesting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and welcome back, Darren. Thank you. You obviously, it's a small heart attack there, I'm assuming, as uh, the technology did its thing. Sorry, sorry um, guys. <laughs> but yeah, I'll uh, just, uh, Alabadi just introduced himself and I'll ask you to um, just introduce yourself to the group. Uh, and yeah. Okay, uh, Nisan Bolovinaka, thanks very much, Tim, for having on me on board. And uh, it's a privilege to be here with Alipati as well, sharing our stories. I guess we uh, linked together with Alipati back to the to Ovalau, to the first capital, like he said. Uh, mm -hmm. My grandparents grew me up to my Vasu side, my mother's side. And uh, yeah, they uh, um, uh, got connections to Levuka. Uh, Um, Wallace and Fortuna as well, my Kamali Eli. I'm uh, 17 years old. I grew up in uh, Samumbula North, Samumbula North at Sensuva. Yeah, came in 1992 to, uh, to um, Wellington, uh, finished my high school there, 
And then I moved up to Auckland in uh, 1994. And I started, uh, yeah, sort of busking on the streets of Auckland, uh, 1998, uh, doing street poetry and uh, learning. Uh, um, that's when I first got into um, uh, sort of poetry writing and art. And uh, yeah, so went on to do a, a couple of albums after that. Uh, first one was self uh, sort of uh, published and self uh, recorded um, and funded by uh, one of my friends called uh, Lee Baker. And I went on to do my second album, which is Creative New Zealand funded. And then, uh, yeah, all mm. that is through poetry. So I've been writing poetry for a long time now, well, for over two decades anyway. And, um, but yeah, most of my poetry is about the, uh, the islands, the city, the old, the new, uh, traditional, contemporary. I try to uh, weave them all together and uh, really telling stories of where I grew up in Fiji and also here in Aotearoa. And just like uh, Alipate, I've been here 29 years. So I came when I was 17. So that's how old I am now. And uh, it's <laughs> a privilege to, uh, to be here in uh, Talano and share my stories. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Thank you, that Darren. Um, I guess we'll um, start with you, Darren, because I think it's been uh, one of the things and one of the reasons we wanted to get you on was um, recently, uh, as well as obviously the release of your, your book this year, I think it's your third or your fourth book, Unimango. Um, but the bit that and some of the people on Facebook might know this more was the the hundred poems for Viti uh, piece that you were doing on Facebook, um, and I suppose that maybe as the starting point. But uh, we'd love to hear more from um, both of you around uh, your work, uh, some of your other pieces, some of the special pieces, um, and if you had any pieces to read, that would be wonderful too. So, Darren, yeah, what what um, as you just said there, your your poetry around the islands and stuff, and I've I've got a copy of Unimango, so I've read. Um, that could you tell us about maybe that book or, or even the hundred the hundred poems for Viti project that you you did oh, on yeah. Facebook? I'll start with the hundred poems. Uh, I guess I started that in the month uh, late month May. I guess Fiji had that uh, virus from April, and then I was following that closely. So I, was th I thought, oh, I should try and do something to support. Actually, it was, it was really to support our people back home and and the hardships that they were going through as well, and trying to, um, yeah. And to lift them up and also make them conscious about how maybe we can, you know, sort of make an influence through poetry. But the, the main thing was I would have done it through poetry because uh, most of our people hasn't uh, had the time to even read my book or even have the, the money to buy my book, uh, you know, go on Amazon to get my book. So I just thought I'll do 100 poems for Fiji or I'll just do it until Fiji recovers. And so within the 100 nights, it, you know, sort of it was still going on. So I thought, yeah. But 100 nights is always a significant number for us, for us in Fiji in terms of uh, celebrating as well. And I guess by the time I got to the uh, end of the 100 nights, Fiji was sort of coming back from the worst uh, that they were facing. I guess over 600 deaths since April it was really touching for me as well. And I was really worried for my family who still stays there in Tumbo Street, Samambolo North. So that's pretty much where my Vunimango is based. I wrote that, you know, to my PhD and stuff. And uh, that, that just got launched this year in April. So uh, a lot of people wouldn't have read that. So I started reading a poem a night from that book. And then I, I carried on until I finished my whole uh, series of books. So there was about three, three books in a catalog. And, um, and in between that, I did performance, uh, poetry, chants, uh, um, voodoo and um, uh, rap and <laughs> freestyle. So just showing how we can use our vocals as well and, uh, and the storytelling behind the poetry voice. Uh, but in, in saying that, I yeah, I, I chose a couple of poems, uh, if you've got time. But um, yeah, so the, I'm just gonna show you the three publications that I've done so far. So this is uh, Tales, Poems and Songs from Under the Water World. This was published in 2011. Um, it was translated in Fijian as well. Uh, I did uh, a who does Fijian linguistics at the um, uh, USP in Fiji. So she was amazing. I met her in Cook Island, and she said she'll translate that into, um, yeah, into Fijian, and also it was translated into Ukraine, where I went in 2013 to go and launch the book as well in Ukrainian. I must say, uh, give thanks to Creative New Zealand. Without them, uh, most of my uh, my career wouldn't have been possible, and all, all those travels and residencies and festivals as well. But in saying that, I guess I'm here to read some poems. So that was my first book. Uh, my second book was Feed um, Out of Water. Uh, the, the evolution. The, the cover is done by a famous uh, international UN artist, John Bullock. 
So him and I could paint the picture of it. Uh, second one, which is what is how I do um, uh, UH and there was three months in uh, 2014. And I have been publishing myself and then until I got for my first book. These two are on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon uh, as well. But um, the third one is, uh, yeah, Bunimango and me, which is very precious to me. Uh, I just wrote that uh, in the last seven years and put that together. It's about growing up there in Tumbo Street in Simambolo uh, First 17 years of my life. It's sort of a memoir collection of my life, my poems. Not particularly about me, but uh, about mainly the people around me. And even the trees and Bunimango itself is a, is a mango tree. So Vunimango and me, there was a mango tree outside our barracks. And my grandfather was a soldier, so we stayed in the barracks. My grandparents grew me up there with my um, other uh, cousins. And uh, yeah, outside the uh, barracks was a mango tree. So I see the voice of the mango tree in here. And it tells us sort of a, a four generation stories that come through um, to Bow Street. But in saying that, I'll, I'll read it for you. Uh, this one's on uh, coverbowl.com if you want to order one of those online. Otherwise, if you're close, just Get me the one I'll, I'll give you one off. Yeah, and um, I'll read you this one. This one's called Mangoes Grew Us. Children danced the Meke, hands, hands swaying in the air, chanting to the sun. Little fingers flick marbles on muddy patch of ground under the mango tree. Iao mangoes hung from Puni Mango once. Children still dance under the mango tree. Only different Meke moves now. Hope history never repeats itself. Iao mangoes hang from her branches no more. Nana and Papa nurtured us all, solo parents and children, huddled closely at 27 Tumbo Street, mosquito nets stuck under mattresses on linoleum floors, women and children in a single bedroom under the kitchen table and sitting room floor, morning novenas, most sacred heart of Jesus, defend us in our battles. Lai Lai medicine every morning kept us well, strangers from all walks of life, now family, meals prepared by the maramas of the house, man worked the tete -te with papa, popo, guava, bananas, dalo, tavioca, yams, bundi, kumala, fresh food Saturdays, seafood Saturdays from Suva market, nama, kuka, ika, kuita, lumi, mana, and gar. Altar boy on Sundays, 10 a.m. mess, lunch after uh, lunch under the Vunimango, strolls to Wailoku Falls in the afternoon, sing along evenings, guitars and ukulele strumming Isale melodies into the night. So soko mix in the carvo bowl, Chinese lollies, chases, the Angona down. This is from one of my <laughs> poems from Bunimango. And um, yeah, do you want me to read a bit more or you want me to hand over to Falipate? Maybe a couple more. Uh, I'll read one for my, my second book which is a uh, squid out of water. Um, sort of he becomes a man now. Uh, this one's, this is an exercise we normally do. I normally do with the classes that I run, workshops uh, with youth and also adults. It's called I am, the, the biggest statement you can use and it's sort of a ownership. So I wrote this, I uh, used the exercise to write this, uh, um, ex uh, this sort of poem called I am the moon and the stars. I am the moon and the stars, wandering far from my island home. I hear the voices of my ancestors chanting me back to my roots. I watch the Nrua, Nauto Nialo, way out at sea, using me to navigate the old traditional way. I am the moon and the stars. I am a giant creature living at the bottom of the sea. I feel with my tentacles, using them to hold my loved ones close and not so loved ones closer. I touch untouched places, reaching the four corners of the earth, pulling them together in Tunisia. I worry I may never turn back to the man I'm supposed to be. I am the moon and the stars. I understand my purpose in the Wasa Wasa, Loma Langi, and Vanua, never forgetting where I come from. I say, Pacificans, forward, ever, backward, never. I dream someday we will all unite, micro, mella, and poly alike together in unity words they don't like. I try my best to keep true to the beginning and the end and everything in between. Forget not your roots, nor your culture. Let's navigate routes back to where we want, belong. I am the moon and the stars.
<laughs> that was for my second book. And uh, yeah, this, this is the last one for my first book uh, that was launched in 2011. So the last 10 years I've launched these uh, three books, um, which is amazing, um, amazing support. I wouldn't have done that with a lot of support around me. So if people do see um, D. Kamali or Darren or DK doing things stuff out there, it's not from just my hard work. It's a lot of people that's helped me where I am mean, today. And I give thanks for that. So this one's, uh, this one's Coconut Tree, Navuni New. Long before civilization, they stood the tree of life in the middle of the sea, standing alone on a deserted Pacific island, swaying to the rhythm of the sea breeze. A young coconut fell from its tree top, rolling down the beach into the vast ocean, floating from island to island, replanting itself on every isle, island, atoll, island, till it reached the last end of Polynesia. This coconut is known as new. It connects the tropics, gifting our island people its shell to serve cover for us and our visitors, its tree trunk to build our homes and furniture, its leaves to make sasa brooms, to clean our rooms, to weave mats for our beds on clay floors, its juice to quench our thirst, its flesh scraped and squeezed into a dish to make wakalolo fish, its milk wrapped in row row leaves placed in the lava pits to make palosami. That lona, that coconut tree, that coconut is now a multitude of many coconut trees, many coconuts spread across our Pacific beaches and backyards, decorating our land and our seas, welcoming tourists, foreigners as friends with open arms to our shores as they make it. They dance in the wind to the sounds of the breaking waves under the tropical sun. Yeah, so that was pretty much from uh, Tales, Poems and Songs from the Underwater World. And um, yeah, I'll just probably leave it at that. I just wanted to say briefly that uh, I'm working on a heritage project called uh, um, called Ulumate or Ulu, Ulu Project, which is uh, the making of uh, a contemporary Uludavu. And I can tell her no more about that uh, later on if we have time, Tim. But uh, Vinakavali, that's from a few poems from my books. And I'll yeah, hand it over now. Joyce, thank you so much, uh, Darren. That was, uh, yeah, no, wonderful. I think, um, I, actually, I was listening to that first poem and uh, what I liked about, and as I've read the Vunimango ones, um, I like how phrases and statements capture or trigger my own memories. Like, I love the phrase there where, you know, tucking in the mosquito net and the linoleum floor. And I have those memories for, you know, visiting my aunties and if any of them are watching they're probably you know be, you know um but you know in Dalanavesi and this, those places we've visited when we go back you know and and staying in those little houses and sharing sharing uh, places and sharing um you know food and and laughter and, and everything else but I love to how just those little phrases even that one <laughs> trigger all those wonderful memories of um you know maybe not all the details but little little places that little images eh? yeah 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 are part of who you are so I really oh, enjoyed those Thanks, as I was reading through. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, Alapati, we'll, we'll throw it to you. Uh, and, and could you just share some of your work? And uh, you sort of alluded to it in your introduction, but some of the work that you've been doing in your school, uh, in Vasavokaviti, and um, the Meke and things, that'd be great. Vinaka, Vinaka, Tim, and uh, Vinaka, Darren, for, man, honestly, yeah, you just um, stirred up a whole bunch of memories. Uh, Everything you read, that's I, that's pretty much how I remember life. Eh? Uh, waking up to the smell of seafood on Saturday mornings because mum and dad had got up at six in the morning to go down to Suva and get up their whole uh, shopping of seafood. And, you know, we'd wake up to like, oh, what's that smell? And we'd come out to the kitchen and see <laughs> that one. <laughs> True's up. And, I, you know, I'd be thinking, oh, what's the occasion? No, it's just a, a normal shopping to have a feed on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, such uh, good heartwarming memories indeed. And um, the way you capture them is definitely, you know, that's just, um, it's like a movie that plays in my head as you read. So that's just amazing. Vinaka for that. Um, here, Vinaka, once again, uh, Tim. Uh, so just a bit about the work that I'm doing. Um, it's a kind of a, a reflection of, uh, I guess, my journey through life. Uh, you know, most people will think uh, being born and raised in Fiji uh you know everything there is to know about culture. 
uh, and identity and so forth. But it, it's not the case because uh, I think, uh, especially if you're growing up in the urban centers where I was born and raised in Suva, um, you know, it comes along with its issues, yeah, of uh, who am I? That's the big question. Um, you know, on dad's side, of course, uh, dad's side, uh, the trails from Levuka, predominantly more into our Itoke culture and identity on that side. Mum's side, she's uh, Alo, Alo, um, also part of the Barrett family from uh, Savu Savu. And so they, of course, are more European. Uh, so, of course, there was always the dilemma of... Uh, Really, on dad's side, they call me Kaibalangi. On uh, mom's side, they say the Kailoma, the half caste. Eh? So, uh, again, you know, it was a confusing episode uh, being raised uh, in Fiji. And then coming out to New Zealand, I'd see how the other island kids were just so into their culture. You know, here in Auckland, they have Polyfest, they have Pacifica, uh, and all the island kids, even though they were born overseas, just rise to rise with pride yeah to showcase who they are and and so that was an eye-opener for me coming out as a young person uh to new zealand and seeing how uh, they wore their culture on their chest and their identity uh and of course i guess that's where my journey began going up and down to fiji i began to realize uh what i knew and what i didn't know but uh, thankfully uh growing up i was always strongly influenced by my mbumbu uh who came in from the village uh, she's originally from, uh, now this of course is my Mbumbu, my, mater, uh, my uh, dad's mother's younger sister. So of course my dad's mom had passed away uh, when I grew up, of course, when I was born. And so it was her younger sister that I kind of took to uh, adopting as my own Mbumbu, even though maternally she wasn't. Uh, but I kind of adopted as my Mbumbu and it was her that um, kind of influenced me. Um, you know, she'd come in, they're from, uh, she's originally from Naroi Moala in uh, the Lao group, Yasasa Moala, uh, and she married in uh, Nangia, Wainimbuka. And so she would come in from the village and come and uh, stay with us in Suva. And um, she only spoke Fijian. She tried, when she would attempt to speak English, it was always broken. Uh, and I remember half of the time I would just be laughing and, and you know, she'd pinch me on the leg and so forth. And, uh, but then, her speaking Fijian constantly just got me to to respond back and you know whether it was broken or whatever I think uh, her just uh, out of her loving nature trying to encourage to uh, encourage me to learn you know she wouldn't make fun of it you know so I guess uh, this went on for several years uh, as I grew up and I, I didn't even realize until I came back away to New Zealand that uh, all this time and interaction with her um, I was perfecting my Fiji and I was perfecting my knowledge uh, and so forth. So I guess where I am today, I kind of attribute her uh, being the anchor in regards to culture and identity. Yeah, Because uh, uh, dad himself acknowledged that uh, he wasn't really uh, strong in, in his identity, even though he was born and raised in the village in uh, Levuka. Uh, he left as a, at a very young age. Uh, I think he only reached... Uh, third or fourth form, I believe, he said at uh, Levuka Public School, and he left to go and work on uh, the wharf in Suva. Uh, eventually, he, he, um, he uh, charted out a career for him in uh, shipping, where he ended up with uh, Safrana Unilines, and, uh, which then became Neptune Shipping. Uh, so he became their top marketing guy there for years. And I know many uh, old uh, Fiji business people uh, know him quite well, and he was quite... Uh, a well-known sociable person. Yeah, and I guess that's where I kind of get my uh, social attributes from. Um, but yeah, so for me, looking back on um, my influence and my experiences with Mbumbu or grandma as uh, in English, uh, for those who don't know, um, she kind of uh, led that uh, charge in my life. And so growing up with struggling to figure out who I was, um, coming to New Zealand, then eventually ending up in Hawaii, uh, it kind of brought everything together. Uh, of course, in Hawaii at the Brigham Young University, we work about 20 hours a week apart from going to school. We work at the uh, cultural center next door. Um, and you can either be working in the Fijian village, the New Zealand village, Tahiti, Tonga, Samoa, Hawaii. Uh, they encourage us to kind of learn everything. But first of all, I went to my hometown of Fiji. So it was there that I kind of... Um, got the chance to kind of solidify everything, to kind of bring everything together 
um, and put it in a format where we were sharing it with tourists, yeah? Um, and I know culture and entertainment uh, takes a, can take a big knock from uh, tourism. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, academics will uh, point out the negative impacts of tourism on culture in regards to entertainment, the preservation of its uh, authenticity and so forth. Uh, but I think, you know, it goes both ways. And I think at the same time, we can also thank tourism because without the tourism dollar, a lot of our people wouldn't be bothered at all to, to, to create the dances, to entertain, to make the costumes, to make the masi that they sell to the tourists, to make the mats and so forth. You know, so I think it goes both ways. We have to acknowledge not just the negative impacts, but also um, I acknowledge tourism as also driving as a part of a driving motivation to preserve the culture as well, because without that, we wouldn't have an incentive to do it. Um, but I guess it's just that realization where we have to um, acknowledge and realize that, hey, you know what, it'll be up to us individually on where we draw the line on, you know, what's Las Vegas and what's authentic. Um, but I guess with that uh, in mind, I came to a point where I realized that, you um, um, indigenous knowledge, our cultural knowledge, uh, it wasn't a thing of, uh, of waste time as, uh, you know, growing up in Fiji, a lot of the times we'll be told by our own family, why are you wasting your time on that? That's not gonna pay the bills. You know, that's what you'll be told. Go to school, go to university, go and learn a Western education. Uh, those things will pay your bills. Um, and sometimes because of that, uh, criticism and that rhetoric from our very own family sometimes will dis will be discouraged yeah so we kind of will hide it or kind of like oh, okay I won't show that side of me um, but you know what as I uh, continued in my journey um, in Hawaii and coming back to New Zealand um, I began to realize more and more how how valuable this is um, you know especially with those of our children who are born overseas um, so I guess that's when the need came to to do something about it as I uh, started to have my own kids. Um, you know, we began to meet other families here within Auckland um, who are experiencing similar things, you know, who wanted to teach their children about Fiji, but uh, themselves didn't have enough knowledge to be able to share, yeah? And so it grew from uh, um, starting in 2017, 2018 uh, with uh, three of my own kids plus two others. So that made about five or six children uh, with uh, classes. And then uh, at the beginning of this year, um, our school register for West Auckland, we had 42 kids at the height of uh, classes. And uh, where we began in South Auckland at the same time, uh, we came up to a register of about 21 kids. And that was just before we went into the lockdown about three months ago. And so um, it's just starting, uh, to grow in momentum with uh, the support from uh, from families within Auckland, and uh, the cool cool thing really is um, that most of the time, while I'm teaching the kids, the parents are sitting at the back, and I can see them kind of paying more attention, and and uh, it's appearing as if they're getting more out of the classes than the kids are. And usually after the classes, they'll come up and say, "Hey, you know what? Um, this is kind of what I always wanted to do, but you know, it's kind of skipped me, and now I'm bringing my kids." Uh, and then I just chuckle and laugh and say, you know what, it's never too late. You know, you can always, um, there's always an opportunity as long as you're willing, um, you know, there's always uh, uh, an opportunity to learn. So never be ashamed to ask those questions and so forth. But uh, yeah, so that's where I stand today is um, our little school of, uh, we call it the Temana Academy. Uh, the name Temana stems, of course, from, uh, you can hear a bit of Maori in that because I acknowledge where we are here in uh, Aotearoa being, um, uh, uh, standing on the land of uh, Tangata Whenua or our Maori brothers and sisters. Uh, I acknowledge them in the land that we live in. So the place, the, our little academy is called Temana Academy, uh, also known as Temana Performing Arts on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Yeah, and so you'll see a lot of the work that, uh, we do uh, featured on those uh, social media pages. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Alapati. Uh, Dr. T, I know she's watching on the Facebook um, page, but she's just said thank you so much. So refreshing to hear your stories. So, um, yeah, no, it's great to hear her that she's there. 
Um, I was just reflecting as you were talking there around how, um, as you said, you know, for, I guess, you know, a Pacific diaspora, but also I think people in, in, in the islands, um, our culture has been either turned into a, a, only a performative piece <laughs> uh, at times uh, in terms of, you know, tourism, uh, but also in terms of external um, agencies coming in. Um, but also I think the challenge of, and, and I scribbled this note, you know, culture and identity, how, how we are seen as um, Pacific people. I mean, the, the silly story I had when I was uh, a younger man and, and traveling the world, uh, you know, catching up with friends. I remember I was in Bangkok just visiting with some friends and, we went down to play some rugby and they said, oh, you're a Fijian, you've got to go out on the wing. Um, and just the the ways in which we are, um, how Pacific, <laughs> stereotypes may be the wrong phrasing, but the, the things yes. that we are seen for, you know, um, like yourself, I mean, my, my heritage is Pakeha and Fijian, but also Fijian Chinese. And I always reflect on, you know, there's a, there's a part of my um, family, which is my grandfather came from China. So, there's a real mix of identity and culture in there. Uh, yeah. And that, you know, within the, the some of the political framings within Fiji, even that's quite challenging to define, you know, um, <laughs> are you Fijian or are you Itauki or are you Fijian Chinese, that's Fijian true. Indian and so on. Uh, and yet sometimes even in, in terms of say Aotearoa or Australia, then, or you're Fijian, then you must know the language. Um, but as you say, a lot of our, our, our parents, um, I mean, my father never taught me uh, Fijian. Uh, we were living in Asia, so we, he spoke Thai. I mean, I'm always in awe of him. He learned he learned <laughs> to speak Thai wow. as well as learned to speak English, you know. And yet when wow. we go back to Fiji, he's absolutely fluent in, you'll just flick straight into Fijian or even into the dialect out of Kandavu. Uh, uh, so, you know, four different languages he's holding in his head. Um, <laughs> and I think what you've described there with the, the, the school in terms of uh, children, learning or reconnecting but at the same time um, having uh, the support from their family and I because I think there's very much identity we hold it close you know and it's hard yeah you know you can almost feel shameful for not knowing the language I know I do uh, and then how do you step into the to, to reconnect because you're seen as Fijian or of Fiji so therefore you must have this part of it it's like well I don't but I want to reach into it um, yes. And I just want to acknowledge what you're doing, but also, and I know Chris, you know, what Dr. Therese is doing with her language courses, you know, my uh, cousins in San Francisco are doing courses with her and, and, and it's wonderful to see some of these platforms come through. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a really, it's a really rich and complex thing, you know, mm -hmm. like I say, my, my cousins in San Francisco are very much, you know, they're, they're young Americans. Um, but at the same time, they're also young, young, young Fijians. Um, right, right. And, and, you know, we do the same here in, in Aotearoa. You know, these are young Kiwis as well as being Fijian. And I think the, you know, I think the, 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 the really positive approach is that you can be both. You know, you can yes. be a successful uh, New Zealand citizen resident in all of the ways that Aotearoa sees success, but actually we can uh, connect and value our our Fijian culture heritage as well. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I think, sorry, I've just gone a bit musy there, but um, I, I was just, it's a really interesting tension that I don't think gets captured often when we say, well, we'll learn our language. Um, it's actually a challenge to learn or relearn or reconnect with the language yeah. and the culture. Yeah. Um, you know, what I really love um, about, um, about um, always collaborating with, uh, and, you know, big uh, aloha and bulavinaka to Dr. T., uh, Darren, uh, Dr. T, myself, uh, another one, Auntie Cho, Anna Monolangi. Uh, these are strong stalwarts who, um, you know, we kind of uh, synthesize of each other's energy. Uh, you know, when Dr. T was back here in, uh, in New Zealand, uh, you know, we were always connecting at different events and different spaces and just kind of feeding off each other's energy. And, you know, it, it's, this, it's this kind of... Uh, connection and a relationship that helps us to be able to share yeah with uh with everyone else so um yeah no no it's uh their work all inspire me and so i mean you know, i'm always thankful to uh be close by so <laughs> you know. oh, bro tito yes <laughs> man uh, they've been uh, like um sorry what's what i've been uh, 
popping in and out, uh, Wi Fi is not the best <laughs> at the moment. But uh, yeah, I, I can understand what we're talking about at the moment in, uh, in terms of being in uh, our kids, especially in diaspora, growing up here in, in the language and cultures might be really f- uh, foreign to them. But that's what I really like about what Ale Pate is doing with uh, Kimana, uh, Meke, and uh, Oso Wakaviti. It's actually really tapping back into um, yeah, some of most of the things that we him and I probably missed out on as well, eh, bro? You know, trying yeah. to be involved in those meke, in the, you know, in the, no. the voodoo and stuff when we were growing up, and we told the Ita, okay, doing all those dancing. <laughs> They're like, no, no, you guys just singing because <laughs> you're not Fiji and we're going to do the dance. <laughs> you, guys, you guys do fair. You can sit on the side. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, let's just get the water ready for us. <laughs> no, but uh, honestly, uh, yeah. But that doesn't uh, stop us from being really proud and, uh, you know, humble. Oh, yeah. now people and now so boy, yeah. I love the talna, naka bro. Yes, sir. no, you know I think it uh, it definitely takes uh, a different kind of courage to being a person of mixed heritage to be able to stand up and confidently claim your identity in that space. You know, uh, regardless of whatever the comments are, uh, you know, and it's that realization. This is where uh, oh, Dr. T and uh, Auntie Chowana would always say, live na bossa melako, just let people talk. Don't worry about them, you know? Uh, and for me, that's kind of where I sit right now is, I don't even think of myself as half caste or half this or half, I just know that I'm Fijian, you know? And uh, whether somebody has a problem or is uncomfortable with the way I look physically, uh, that's, to me, that's their, um, it doesn't really affect me, you know? Uh, and especially at times where you have uh, you're walking out to Fiji Day celebrations and you're leading your little group of uh, you know we've also been labeled at times <laughs> you know I just have to laugh eh? because when you look at our kids they are all kids of uh, mixed heritage you know we've got Fijian, European, we've got Fijian, Croatian, Fijian, South African, Fijian, China. I've never heard all the mixes under the sun before. Uh, and, you know, it's a really beautiful thing. If you look at the kids uh, and all the different mixtures and features, it's just such a beautiful thing to see. But the one thing that uh, commonly unites them all is their desire to be, to be known as Fijians. They want to identify, they want to connect. And they're really proud, you know, after that first big, performance of uh, Meke at Fiji Day, my gosh, you should see them. They're running around confidently playing. The parents are really happy. And uh, for me, that's what makes all the work worth it. eh? It's like pushing through the the late nights of making costumes and the rehearsals and so forth, just to see that and get a glimpse of like, hey, you know, that confidence I have, they've got some of that and they feel good in that space. Uh, And you know what? It just makes it all worth it. And all those other issues of, uh, oh, but you're only a quarter Fijian or you don't even look full Fijian, doesn't bother me. I just laugh, you know, I just have to laugh it off. Um, we can use more and... black paint. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> or, we, or maybe we need to all go to Hawaii to be with Dr. T to get some uh, good suntan there. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's um, fantastic, Alpati. Thank you. And I was just reflecting as well. I think, um, as you said there, it's just wonderful that our young people are feeling a pride in something that's inherently part of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that it, it's been a, not one of the ones that we probably talk about a lot, but one of the things that's been a real privilege for me in this project, uh, this Pacific Virtual Museum project, is to lead a a very small team, but three people, uh, Tapatu from the Cook Islands, Ulu from Samoa, and myself from Fiji and China. But actually, I think uh, one of the things that's been um, really powerful about that is to present Pacific Islanders in a space, a library, a national library in a digital space, which often I think for our, um, in a, in a Pacific Island narrative is not a space that you see Pacific Islanders, <laughs> you know, working right. in, you know, when we say Pacific Island cultural heritage, it's in you know, performing arts or it's in culture. And so I'm really proud of the fact that our team is working in a space that if we can be um, uh, normalize that maybe, but you know, that it's still inherently in, in a culture and a language that's really strong, but also be successful in a space that, in a space, sorry, my language, in a space mm-hmm. that we mostly don't see Pacific Islanders, um, you know, mm-hmm. and to 
recognize you know people like Suliana Vea and and our other Pacific Island mm-hmm. staff and that and to lift them up I think that's a very um, important and powerful piece of our work not just shining a light on uh, cultural heritage objects and items but actually the, the Pacific Island people in 2021 working in these spaces and bringing their perspective and their pride to it so um, I think in a in a similar way the question I had um, how what are the ways that you see and and obviously within the school uh, and then Darren in your in your work what are the ways do you think we can um, continue to share and and highlight um, you know Pacific Fijian island culture in a way that holds to its uh, holds to its heart I suppose but also mm-hmm. speaks to the complexity of being a diaspora being uh, mixed identities um, because I think one of the wonderful things about this project is uh, cultural heritage from um, say the glam sector, museums, libraries, archives is very much, uh, um, you know, seen in objects or items or photos. And I think what I love about what you've both described is, is it, the culture is inherent in, in lived experience, in process and in performance. Um, what are the ways uh, that you think um, we can better support um, Pacific cultural heritage in these ways uh, to make them accessible, to make them visible, I guess? Go ahead, uh, Darren. I'll meet you. Exactly. <laughs> I want to say thank you first, uh, firstly, Tim, for that uh, digital online uh, platform that you've set up with, um, yeah, with the National Library and uh, and MFET Australia, and uh, and I've really uh, seen a lot of images there that I haven't seen before, and it's awesome how you encompass all the different uh, islands of the Pacific, uh, Mona, Oceania, and uh, all the information that comes with photographs, uh, cameras, uh, you no know, music. All the stuff that happens there because I work with uh, Pacific Heritage uh, collections up at uh, uh, special collections in Central Library in Auckland, um, and uh, yeah, it sort of uh, complements that. And I've I've uh, been telling people I've learned in the last eight years of working at the museum and the Auckland libraries that I've learned more about Fiji than I grew up there 17 years of my life, and it's uh, really given me that uh, <laughs> in depth. And uh, just reading letters from the 1800s, you know, and 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 uh, hand-printed letters, you know, written by the person. And even with uh, missionaries who came, you know, seven Tongans and seven Fijians, and they wrote the Bible, different uh, scriptures in Fijian, you know, like Noah's Ark. And then we've got all those collections. It's really, um, you know, enriching. And uh, if, if it's really enriching for me, I'm always trying to encourage people to come in and see it uh, or even digitize it. So uh, Auckland libraries are all, um, sort of always uh, looking at uh, digitizing specific collections special collections, even like the Captain Cook book that has, you know, from uh, from 1700s uh, that he went to the three islands, Tonga, um, you know, Cook Island, uh, Tonga, uh, Tahiti, and Hawaii. And with all those collections, we had, I think we only got two or three books here in uh, New Zealand. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, just those really um, amazing in-depth archives and, um, and other books, poetry. There's, there's multiple of uh, Pacific poets now, you know, um, uh, since the time of Ipeli Alpha and, and Albert went. So now there's, there's more of our poets and our stories as before. And uh, this, I guess with me, uh, I'm always um, yeah, looking at how I can help my other Pacific Islanders here in uh, New Zealand in terms of trying to reach out for their own uh, sort of language and culture or, or art. And, um, and I do it through poetry if, if I can. And um, that's how I sort of reach back into the language myself. I was at, uh, uh, after 17 years and I came here, I was. Yeah, I sort of stayed dormant for about almost a decade, you know, and you're not speaking and you're not thinking about being, uh, you know, you're trying to, you want to speak Fijian, but there's no Fijians around, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's hard to think Fijian when, you, when you're not thinking mm-hmm. others as well, but um, I'm happy with the art that we've chosen and I'm happy with uh, what we've got now. And in saying that too, um, the government's been awesome in terms of our funding, especially our MPP funding for people here. And we're trying to encourage that. And um, yeah, it's always good to have uh, advice around that. And um, I'm always trying to help people if they do uh, sort of tap into it or uh, ask them to help. I mean, um, people know that my my wife is a, as an MP, is a minister, and they think it's really easy. It's, not, it's actually not easy for me at a conflict event. Um, so even though New Zealand knows me as an artist or poet before I met my wife, it's still uh, I have to declare, okay, uh, no, no. This is all my doing, and uh, 
I guess this this stuff about learning around um, being passionate and being talented is easy. But I guess in this space uh, world, it's possible to have a business and make it a business uh, as opposed to when we first came. Like Alipati said, our parents said, no, no, you you go there, it doesn't pay the bills. So, you know, find something that will work. And I guess in today's world, it's really um, technology and with everything we're access to now, even in terms of funding, our younger people has more um, opportunities, but in a, in a way that we can guide them as well and channel them to those spaces if we need to. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right, uh, Vinak, uh, Darren, um, oh, you know what? Uh, we are so blessed here. Eh? I think we are so lucky to, to be in New Zealand uh, where the government of the day supports um, cultural identity, cultural preservation. Um, I remember my last trip to Fiji was in uh, December of 2019, just before the borders had shut down the following year uh, of 2020. And we uh, made a visit to the uh, Institute of uh, Language and Culture in Suva, as well as the uh, Fiji Arts Council. And, um, you know, we just had a, we, we had a talanoa with them and uh, uh, heard about the amazing work that they're doing. Um, but, you know, to hear that, uh, that it's not a top priority of the government in Fiji at the moment, yeah? Um, there is support there, but, uh, nothing as near as what we're getting here in New Zealand uh, for culture and identity. Um, and they look up to us in New Zealand um, as kind of uh, pioneers, I guess, leading the way in, uh, New Zealand is a, is a leader in many things, yeah? Uh, cultural preservation and uh, indigenous rights is definitely up there on the list. Uh, I know the Hawaiians look up to Tangata Whenua here in New Zealand as far as rights and so forth and, uh, standing up for um, the uh, for the actions or the, the ill treatment of the past, I guess, if you're looking back to colonial times here. Yeah? Um, and it's, it's amazing to see that we as Pacific Islanders are also benefiting from being in the same space because our Tangata Whenua brothers and sisters are leading the fight that we, can, we benefit from their achievements. We benefit um, as far as support that comes to us, yeah? Uh, from MPP, from Creative New Zealand, uh, from the many other funding sources out there. Um, and, you know, it's it's just amazing to see uh, the work and a platform such as this, the digital Pacific uh, space as well, um, because this is where the next generation is all hibernating or, or I guess, hiding online. You know, I, I don't know how many times a day after school I have to growl at my pre-teenagers to get off that device or I'm going to put that device in the pool or throw it in the middle of the road because I keep talking to the wall and they're not responding you know uh, and it's like goodness you know it's like you take the device off them and it's like you've cut an arm off and they can't function without it but um, that's this generation you know it's they're so connected to devices and digital um, online platforms and so forth I'm thinking like, man, I, I think back to my childhood and I think, you know what? I grew up without none of that. You know, we never had mobile phones. There was no internet. It's a marble uh, season. Marble, exactly, you know? <laughs> oh, like, you know, it was a social interaction with the kids on the block. Eh? Um, and I'm thinking like, wow, I'm so thankful for those times. But, um, you know, we can't shelter them from it. Um, they're going to be uh, immersed in it, whether we like it or not. Um, and I think rather than uh, disarm them or de-equip them from being able to navigate the space, because I'm pretty sure whatever work they'll get into, uh, digital um, technology and skills is going to be up there on the list. Yeah? So it's, it's a really um, double-edged sword to navigate that space. Uh, but it's also the best platform, I believe, to, to promote this type of our work, you know, through the knowledge and the culture. I'm really thankful for Tim and the work uh, that you're doing as well, because it gives uh, people a chance to see that uh, we're not just museum exhibits um, or we're not just all in books. You know, we have evolved. We have come. We are people of two worlds. And uh, a lot of us are still active in the spaces of culture and uh, poetry and literature in our own perspective Yeah, to be able to tell our own stories rather than having a, a foreigner come in and tell us how we, how we live or who we are, basically. Um, 
And I think, yeah, we are definitely leading the way. Um, the need that I saw back in Fiji is uh, that they look up to us. They look up to the work that we're doing overseas, you know, and it, it, it's really humbling to think that for myself, I was thinking, I'm just teaching language because I don't want the kids to be lost uh, or confused. Uh, but yet I hear that even in Suva, there's uh, kids who are full-blooded Fijians uh, that don't even speak the language because they're raised in an urban environment. Uh, you know, and I guess the, the love for things that are Western, the music, the style of dress, uh, even watching other, culture, uh, other cultural performances, um, I can remember, I can recall many comments when, uh, when we're watching a, a Fijian Meke in high school in Fiji, um, I'd hear comments like, oh, oh, you know, they're only thinking, oh, this item only good enough for dating the stage because the leaves all falling off. We want to see one hula from the Cook Islands or Hawaii or, you know, this, this obsession with the hula and the tamure and this and that. I'm saying, hey, what about our own meke? How come you guys are, are more supportive of other cultures rather than our own, you know? So I think there's like a, a big reset of, um, of thinking and... Um, of, I guess, uh, of how we view ourselves first, you know? Uh, and that starts right at the core from the motherland. But, uh, but I believe uh, strongly in the words of uh, Dr. John Jonathan, former academic uh, of BYU Hawaii, uh, former ambassador for Cook Islands to New Zealand. Uh, he comes along with the caliber of uh, Professor Ron Crockham from uh, the Cook Islands, uh, that caliber of uh, old school academics, uh, which, uh, he was one of my academic mentors in Hawaii as well. He said that the charge for cultural preservation and the lead to preserve it will be led from overseas, from Pacific Islanders who live overseas. And he wasn't just referring to Cook Islanders, he was referring to Tongans, to Samoans, to Fijians, because those of our families and friends who are in the islands take things for granted. And I can remember, I was one of them. When I was in Fiji, I would think like, oh, you know, I want to go overseas. I'm sick of all of this, you know. Um, and then when I came overseas, I realized like, hey, you know what? I actually left something behind, you know, uh, and I wish I could get that time back. So when I did go back to Fiji, I was sure to, to really take advantage, you know. Um, and I think I can see that already happening because our people back home are watching us uh, from there. Um, the onus is on us to, to show them that, hey, there is value in your identity. There is value in your culture. Um, since I've been down uh, out uh, three months with no work uh, with Air New Zealand in aviation, this work of teaching language online, um, I was also selected as the 2021 Artist in Residence for Pacific Dance. Um, you know, these things tend to come at the right time and provided another source of income for the family. Uh, and then who would have thought that teaching Meke to uh, kids online and language would have been another form of income, you know? If you told me that 10 years ago, I would have just laughed and said, Sechi, what a waste of time. You, what, are you, what are you drinking? I want some of that because I, don't, uh, I just can't see how I can make a living out of doing this, you know? Um, uh, just all those thoughts of Sechi, you know, Kanithava, what for? Um, but, you know, honestly, it's, it's a blessing. And, uh, and I realize that uh, as the world gets more into um, uh, progresses into the future, we've got climate change issues, we've got uh, identity, this, the social problems are mounting, uh, and indigenous culture and knowledge is the way forward. We are the ones who are going to lead the charge to save this planet eventually, because we are the ones closest, closely connected to the Vanua or the land. Uh, and the same thing with social problems. Uh, the reason why our kids, uh, maybe uh, PI and Maori kids are maybe at the highest stats in prison is because these are the kids that are disconnected from identity and culture, or maybe disowned from family. There's a, there's a break in the system. But I can promise you that if they were well connected uh, to a decent level, they wouldn't be in those spaces. Because when you know who you are, you'll ensure that you, you know, it's, you're not going to have a perfect life, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's almost an assurance that uh, you will navigate the waters or the, the trials uh, a lot better than, say, those who, who don't have any cultural values to stand on. Uh, and that's what I try to remind our kids every day is to, 
you know, what you're learning in school is important, but uh, what you're learning from uh, the, your culture and identity, it's a part of you. It's in your DNA. Whether you speak the language or not, uh, you have that mana in, inside of you. You know, it's just a matter of awakening it inside of you and, um, and using it to your advantage, you know, to help navigate. You know, when these things happened uh, with COVID-19 uh, and I remember going to the supermarket and my wife was saying, what are we going to buy? What kind of food do we need to have for lockdown? For me, I'm thinking, Lisa, when we had cyclone in Fiji, we just have nguntim uh, biscate, uh, we have rice and tuna, and all these uh, survival foods start coming into my head. Eh? And I thought, hey, we're going to be okay. You know, we don't have to have uh, a roast, uh, roast lamb or ham or pork on the spit or whichever. Um, you know, this is one thing that we are survivors. We have been through challenging times. Um, and every challenge for us is just an opportunity to grow and to use uh, the knowledge that we have, yeah? Um, yeah, and I, and I just think um, for us Pacific Islanders, uh, as Fijians, as Pacific Islanders, the most successful Islander or Fijian uh, will be the one that can navigate two worlds. We have to navigate in two worlds. Uh, I say the Western world, as well as our indigenous world. We have to take the two marry them together. And that's the only way we'll be able to survive because we can't live in a Western world or a European dominated world and deny who we are because it's in our DNA. We need to acknowledge our cultural roots and our identity to be able to move forward in life. Um, and I think when we're able to master that and play that game, uh, that's when I think, you know, you you pretty much hit those, uh, those um navigational waters yeah or what you call that on the ocean uh darren when you hit that uh kind of like that surf with a canoe on the waves and so forth um, or, cruising, <laughs> <laughs> or cruising altitude as uh in aviation you know where there's no uh turbulence but uh you i think that's all i just wanted to share i better stop right there or before i carry on too long <laughs> vinaka vinaka no, bro. No. <laughs> Oh, Vinaka, thank you very much, Alapati. That was, um, yeah, no, yeah, lots of lots of wonderful pieces you've touched on there in terms of the complexity, but also the richness and the opportunity and the challenges of the identity. I love how you say that. You know, our identity is is us. Uh, what we do with that can be, uh, you know, delivered in very powerful and, and different ways, and the opportunities are unique. Uh, and I think that is, as you said there at the end, the ability to walk between uh, both worlds. Uh, uh, I think with grace and, and graciousness, maybe is the right frame, um, yes. being gentle. I think, uh, you know, my, my daughter spends a lot of time online, as, as most people do. Um, I think <laughs> one of the great challenges of the, and Darren and I were talking a little bit before the talk started, um, of what is the narrative of, of our society when everything on social media or mainstream media is very reaction and and uh, oh. clickable, you know, <laughs> uh, that, that the, the narrative is around instant reaction and, mm. and, you know, our cultural heritage, even in the Meke, that comes down from hundreds of years. This, this, mm. What is it to change a narrative that sees uh, an ability for our people to be part of a long, a long thread rather than just the reaction of this 24 seven oh, cycle, definitely. you know, to, to understand <laughs> how that heritage connects us a long way back and has, the ability to guide us a long way forward, I think, is um, mm -hmm. in a digital space where it's very much reactions. <laughs> uh, the the ability to see how do we respond to, like you say, the complexities of climate change, but also even just the, the complexities of being of Fiji, Fijian, and and our yes. own culture and identity in, in as diaspora as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much to both of you. Our, that hour has rushed past. Um, uh, uh, we did ask, I don't think anyone has asked any questions in the chat. Um, there's been a couple of comments there. One from May, who's at the Solomon Islands Museum. Uh, yeah. It's true that we should learn our generation, help our generation to learn our culture and tradition rather than let them just learn modern pop culture. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, thank you so much um, for from others there. Um, I don't know, I'll throw, I'm happy to throw it open. I don't know if anyone who's in the zoom space if not the facebook space wanted to ask any questions of either darren or alapati wanted to make a comment if you just uh, use the button and raise your hand i'll uh, 
turn mm -hmm. on your microphone and allow you to talk. I um, mm -hmm. don't know if anyone wants to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you don't, that's fine too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, I, it is just gone two o'clock, so I'm happy to wrap it up. Um, thank you so much again to both of you. Um, thank you for the links I put. I shared the Timana Performing Arts Facebook page into the group uh, Alapati, and we'll um, share it on, on Facebook mm -hmm. as well as in the YouTube channel when we edit this video up. Uh, and Darren, I, I found the Carver Ball Media and the Amazon links for the, the books as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to you for both joining us. Did any of you, either of you, one last thing to say to the group, either on Facebook or in Zoom? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say thank everyone uh, for tapping in, especially at the last minute, <laughs> so sending them all the links and all. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I could see all the names there, Opeta, Naka, Side mm -hmm. 2, uh, Sean Mellon there, uh, Yoko, Yoko Peta. Thank you guys, man. Uh, Auntie Joanna, Teresi just sent me a message as well. Um, yeah, man. And sorry if I didn't see any other ones there, but Nagavali for the support and uh, yeah, and, and to all our um, the different islands and our whatever struggles we face and opportunities. Yes, you are likewise a to everyone for always the love and the support uh, uh, for all uh, the work that we do. Um, also, just wanted to give a shout out to uh, keep an eye out uh, next year, hopefully around uh, October next year. Uh, we're planning the first ever Melanesian festival in Auckland. Uh, mm -hmm. And so myself, along with Aunt Joanna, and a few other um, leaders in the Melanesian community from Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, uh, Solomon Islands. Um, there's gonna be some comms uh, later on uh, before the end of this year. So uh, yeah, feel free to share it out. Uh, I think it's time for Melanesia to uh, rise in this space. <laughs> but hey, we all welcome everyone. Yeah, our Polynesian brothers and sisters, Micronesia, um, Eo. So uh, look out for that. That's the next big project. Coming up next year. Nava Lev Sara. Wadamanda, Nava Lev, Tim, Alipati. Thank you so much to both of you, and we'll definitely share that uh, when the news comes out. Um, thank you to everyone for joining us, uh, and um, we look forward to seeing you the next time. Um, we will hope you have a blessed and safe week wherever you are. Uh, take care, and we'll catch up soon. Naka. Naka. Bye. Bye.